we have won. At long last, we have an accurate agent in Total War, Isaac Newton in Empire Total War under a British faction. He starts off the game at 57 years of age and as one of the best scientists in the game. Historically, this was accurate for the time. Welcome to Total War Profiled, a series that looks into what parts of the game development was inspired by history and at the end of the video will rank it based on its historical accuracy. It also looks into um, whether we might find some film inspiration or some other form of inspiration but usually that's much harder to find. Today we are for the first time taking a look into Empire Total War with the British. The game starts in 1700. Where to begin? Okay, let's start with the government. In game, they start off with William III as the monarch, which was accurate historically. Not only that, but it seems the government's cabinet is also accurate. Sidney Godolphin and John Egerton uh, were historically accurate characters that were in politics at the time and also appear in the game. I could not find references to all of them in my brief bit of research, but I am going to assume that there is some historical backing behind um, all of them. For those who expect more research out of me, well, one of the guys is called John Smith. Uh, like, come on. Search John Smith online and one million Wikipedia pages pop up. There's only so much I can do. Wait a minute, now I think about it, I'm reading an old script. I actually did find out who this guy was. I'll have a picture of him on screen, but yeah, I actually did find out who this guy was, and he was accurate. My bad. Although it does seem that the candidates um, that you can promote up, if you ever want to, they seem to be fictional, however. Now, onto the map. In-game, they start off with Britain, Ireland, the Bahamas, Jamaica, Rupert's Land, Canada, uh, with the 13 col colonies as a protectorate. Now let's look at the colonial bit first. Very accurate. Some of it was British territory, some of it was company territory, but overall it fits the map quite well. It would have been more accurate though, I think, if they had more land in Canada, and maybe some small pockets in India, or some references to them being in India, but overall, I cannot complain. I like it. There's two major issues, however, when we get to Britain, and that is firstly to do with Scotland. Scotland was an independent kingdom during the year 1700 and it only joined with England after 1707 with the Treaty of Union so although the game starts in 1700 it is actually 1707 when it comes to Britain. On a similar note the flag uh, that is used in the game was adopted in 1707 and not used in 1700. However to be honest I am happy the devs concentrated more time on fixing the real issues of this game rather than its historical accuracy. Although they did not do the best job at fixing the issues of the game, if they were to make Scotland independent and add a mechanic that merges them both later, create Scotland's own unit pool, then the game's launch would have been far worse and even more buggy. They also made a mistake with Ireland. Ireland was not part of this union as it is portrayed in the game, it would be another 100 years later or so that Ireland would be part of Britain the way it is shown in the game. Overall, the map of Britain is probably the game's biggest downside when it comes to its historical accuracy. Okay, now that is the map on a global scale, but let's zoom in a little bit. The British government's main building in London is called Parliament. Referencing, you won't believe this, but the Houses of Parliament. Um, it's just a reference to our government system. And York, near where I come from, has a weaver's workshop. I believe York, during the Industrial Revolution, uh, their main production theme was cotton and wool production and cloth, so that is accurate. Similarly, Birmingham in-game has an iron workshop, which they were historically known to have produced as well. The game features Oxford and Cambridge as schools, Cambridge with a chance to become a university, yet yeah, Oxford is just on the religious college route. I don't understand why, maybe there is some historical backing behind it, but it was a university back then. I don't know. Maybe one of the devs was from Cambridge 
and added a piece of rivalry into the game. I, I don't know. Like mocking it, saying it's not a real university or something in the game. It's possible, but I doubt it. I don't know. The diplomacy. The British start off allied with Austria, Hanover, Portugal and the United Provinces, with an extra trade agreement with the Swedish. These nations here have all been close allies with Britain in the past and are generally countries that uh, they have gotten along with. So I'll say it's accurate. Some other interesting facts. The main item for the British and um, the starting trade is sugar. Uh, this is very accurate as the British uh, stereotypically loved to have all this sugar put in their tea. The British start off again with the highest naval and enlightenment prestige. Again, accurate, although I will give us best prestige at every category, but maybe I'm just a bit biased. The victory objectives are also kind of accurate. We have to hold the northeast coast of America, a mission that historically the British seemed to be going for until we were betrayed. You know what I mean. They also have to take their historical early Indian territory, Egypt and Malta. Why Egypt and Malta, you may ask? Well, because those are ports that the British used um, to get their trade ships through. Uh, a passage through the Suez Canal to India was much quicker than having to go all the way around South Africa. So yeah, th those lands there have been very important to the British Empire, so I can understand why it's in the mission tree. Last but not least, the unit roster of the British. This bit will be split into two parts, land and sea. Let's begin with the land. The British generals are as follows. Henry de Massu, John Churchill and Kevin McDowell. Two of these are accurate, and one to my knowledge I think might be fiction. Kevin McDowell seems to be fiction, but that's not a guarantee. I, I just couldn't find any reference of him in my uh, very quick research, but given how much research is put into all the other ones and how everything else is accurate, I'm gonna, I'll actually assume that yes he is accurate, uh, but not famous enough to have his own Wikipedia page. Let's start off with a French one, Henri de Massou. Uh, he was French but exiled, he then spent a lot of his time as Commander-in-Chief in Ireland, which is in-game where he and his army starts. He also has a retinue referencing his French background. John Churchill, the famous Duke of Marlborough, arguably the greatest general in British or English history of all time, but not as well known as some of the others. He is also accurate in game. The British Army also has the Yeomanry Cavalry, which were an accurate unit used, but not until 90 years after the start date. Still, this unit is covered in the game's historical span. We also have access to the Chasseurs Britanniques. Uh, this unit started in the year 1800 and was made up of French royalists and later deserters who fled or were exiled during the French Revolution. They joined with the British Army as a chasseur. Uh, their uniform in game is incorrect. They wore a green with a bit of yellow, uh, not blue, and a red coat. This is just another example of the developers moving away from history to focus on gameplay. If the unit was to go by its historical colour, then players would often confuse them on the map for being part of a different faction because they're under a different weird looking uniform. So I can understand why they made that change to them. Last but not least, we have the Hessian Line Infantry. These are units from Hesse, obviously. They were often used as mercenaries and were frequently purchased for combat by the British during the 1700s. On to the Navy. The three admirals are also very accurate. Uh, although George Rook has uh, the retinue sickly, which I could not find any historical reference to, um, imagine that, you joined the navy and commanded a ship in a war, then you die and 200 years later you come back as a ghost and see yourself in a total war game. Nice, great you might think, uh, that you're being shown in a total war game 200 years later. Then you click on your character and the first trait or retinue that, uh, that you see describes you as being sickly. <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> Now, I think this is where it gets a bit more interesting, but I couldn't actually find um, much about this. Each ship in the game has its own name. I had a look and it was 
only a brief look, as there was only so much research I had time to do for each video. Now I couldn't find any full concrete proof that any of these ship names are accurate, but I did find references to those names. Um, I believe that these ships, especially the ones uh, with an admiral in, are possibly accurate. But I can't back it up, but I think, if I had to guess, I think they are as I did find references to them. By all means, please search them yourself and tell me in the comments what you found if you want to. That is everything, and wow, what a, what a great faction for this series. There's so much history here. This, in my original plan, was going to get 5 star rating for its historical accuracy. Um, but I cannot let the fact they got Ireland and Scotland wrong just float away like that. Although I am happy with their decision, I, I'm very happy with the decision, um, because it would it would have meant they could spend more development time on actually improving the gameplay and fixing the bugs, but it is quite a big inaccuracy, and given the historical rivalry between the British, uh, the English, the Scottish and the Irish, this was a, a dangerous move to pull uh, for the Irish and the Scottish fans. Overall, I will give this faction 4.5 stars out of 5. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. There, there was a lot here, many of which I did not even get around to, um, but that's just how it is. Subscribe for more, these are every Saturday, share with someone you think may be interested, and good bye.